Here. 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 Thomas Baldwin. Here. I need a uh, motion to approve the uh, minutes for our January meeting. Not second that. I need a motion first and then a second. So oh, you, uh, you do approve. I'll, I'll make a motion. All right. Second. The minutes. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Um, the board reports. Do um, you have anything? Pardon? Board report. Okay. Uh, again, a little bit out of the area, but it is voting and it is part. And uh, one day I stopped about a week and a half ago when there were no sailing boards or anything. It was all fishermen and that. Stood on a dock for a little while and, and <clears throat> two things that they would like to have. I explained to them we were going to be doing some things, but. They don't understand that when they back the boat down into the, the uh, channel that's been made to go parallel to the road, that they can't have all the way, they keep wondering why they can't back it down further and we can't extend the, <laughs> the ramp. But the reason is, is if you've got traffic coming uh, on the regular area. So that's one thing, and in listening to it, I thought maybe we could do some signage that we'd put up, not out of where the end of the, the canal is, but maybe right there at the start when they start backing up that there's, the ramp is so long, and oh, by the way, be careful, remember, this is a, a regular canal. I'm sorry, I didn't catch where you started with that. For what, what ramp? Huh? The, on 520, the Centennial Park. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that would, it won't solve their problem, but at least they'll give them an explanation at this time. Well, we, we might have a little information in our meeting today on, on, be. on, on Bicentennial yeah. Park and, and where we're going um, with dates and, and time frames and yeah. getting that fixed. Yeah. That would be the main thing. I have not been able to move around a lot, and so I uh, haven't talked to a lot of boaters. That's obvious. Or done any boating myself. So. Huh. Okay. Uh, Lucas? Uh, I think, as you, as you recall last time, I didn't really know or choose anything specifically, so I'm mm -hmm. kind of getting my feet wet with um, going around to several locations and, and just kind of seeing what maybe I would like to be more focused on or anything. At, at this point, I, I don't have anything specifically focused. However, I made a few notes uh, just on, on, on our parks. I've been on the website, which is, I think, well-maintained. Um, however, uh, until today with the, with uh, this that Andy gave me, um, I guess I wasn't really all that familiar with where all the parks are. And this is actually a nice little map on here, but that's not on, on the website, or at least I couldn't couldn't find that. Is, is that on the website that we're aware of? No. Just a generalized map of where all the... We can put that on. We can put something on. Yeah, because this is fantastic for me. And then... Yeah. Oh, there is that one on there? Oh, Uh, along with that, uh, a few of the parks that I've been to, and maybe I'm just missing it, but they don't have specific signs, speaking of some signage of what the park is or the name of the park or anything like that. I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm missing that specifically, but that's just one thing that I've noticed being newer to the area and just seeing, going about and, and finding these locations. Afternoon. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, outside of that, uh, I don't have a zero wind focus at this moment. I think I'll need a little bit more time to decide if, if that's if that's all right with, with you guys. I know everyone else has a specific thing they're interested in or, or a part of. Yeah. And if I could uh, be more generalized at the moment. And Absolutely. You'll find you'll find your niche or whatever yeah. you do, or just in general see a little bit of everything. Sure. Okay. And that's that's perfect. However, yeah. I think this map is fantastic, and if. And if yeah, these this aren't produced um, much anymore, if we could get that on the website, that'd be that'd be great. Yeah, when was when was this made? It's been years now. Really? Yes, years now. Where can I find find these? Where would they? Rex, Rex, we had we had actually made them for hotels. That's okay. what that, that was the original plan with them to put into hotels and so that visitors would know exactly what what we have in the city. Yeah. Yeah. Hotels, museum. I'm sorry. I said, are they getting picked up at the hotels? Yes. Good. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But well, I can get you some of them. Okay. Tiller. 
Um, as far as uh, the skate park goes, I went and I visited Mike Rogers um, at the skate park and kind of looked at the conditions over there. At the time the restrooms were being worked on, there was definitely some uh, damage to the skate park and would make it unsafe and things like that. So we had a discussion about that and then I went and saw Laird and Andy this past week and um, there was some progress made. Um, the bathrooms are complete. Close. Close. Yes, yes. <laughs> they were working on a shade project, but um, it wasn't going to be a pavilion, but it was going to be some shade. Um, they have a bid out for repairs, but it's going to take a minute. Yeah, so one bid so far. We were trying to figure out um, maybe if some people who know how to do concrete or whatever can do it on a voluntary basis. Not sure about that, but. Um, um, the draining was a separate issue, but there was some progress made in it, but I'm just gonna keep um, checking in with them on that because there was definitely some damage over there. And uh, there was a, um, a, a subject brought up about going to the school board, was it the school board, about their extra piece of property, yes. maybe if they could yes. get the um, BMX. permission for property over there, they can, dump some like clay over there or whatever that the BMX guys use. So oh. that would solve the BMX problem, hopefully over at the skate park. But uh, what I've heard with that is um, they have forums and they're just like, hey, there's a bunch of clay dropped over here and they'll bring shovels and form it to how they want. So um, so anyway, there's some ideas. Oh, that'd be for, pretty neat to have a bike. bike yeah, we actually, um, we actually had a meeting with a person from the school board last week. And we have another meeting coming up this Friday, but it's, it's a process. Oh, yeah. get, get anything from the school board is a process. Of course, so, yeah. yeah, at least the conversation has started about getting some extra land to possibly do a BMX track. Yes, yeah. So there's some wheels in motion on that. And then I have some contacts for the skate park. So I've just been talking to them and then trying to learn. Like that's an area I'm not familiar with, but definitely glad to help out with. So everybody's been real nice about that. Um, the volleyball courts, we mentioned maybe taking a look at Fisher Park for courts. And uh, I've talked to a guy that's pretty knowledgeable about you know building them and things like that. Okay. So that's just something that's in motion too. I haven't met the. Um, uh, we're gonna meet the aquatic yeah, and the tennis people yeah. I think, here soon. So the heads of that. So I can go and sort of check in on what's going on over there. Yeah, that's that's uh, become a sport in you know, high school sport. Yeah. Now it's college it's beach. Oh yeah. Well, well, but I know it's been college for a while, but now it's it's kind of. It's filtering, yeah. filtering down to the yeah. high schools finally, yeah. and this is where it should start, yeah. really. Oh you yeah. Know, in, in our county and specifically on the, on the Barrier Islands. But. Yep. Merritt Island has built a court yeah. recently. Um, Satellite's got courts down that they just recently finished, and but um, the guy that's really connected with the kids and stuff here, he said like there are students here in Cocoa oh, Beach yeah. that are very interested, and there there are all, many of them that go to the college level and play and compete at a high level, so. Mm -hmm. Yep, I know some that are going to some competition in May, so it's so good stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, that's all I have. Okay, awesome. John? Sorry I was late. No, it's a, you're right on time. We are still waiting, I think, for our ADA bulge to be delivered for the parks. Yes. And when we get that uh, material in, we'll get, get it dropped, and then we'll have the uh, Rotary has two parks. We have Kevin Barkley Rotary Park, and then we also have the Cocoa Isles Park. Uh, Coco Isles, we're going to be doing some painting, mulchy, and those type of things, but it's probably not going to happen now until after Easter. <laughs> yeah. But uh, things are going very well. Laird, I had a question for you. Yes. Where do we have pickleball as far as the outside course? Is it Kevin Barkley? <laughs> and Grant Brown. That Okay, those are the only two. Yes. Okay. It, outside. That's what I thought. You got, got, rec got inside at the rec center. Yes, yes. No, I th we, we need to wrap up this uh, adoption situation again with our mm -hmm. parks because even though it's not that much work a couple times a year, it sure cuts back on a lot of city assistance if they yeah. just get the material through. So, so we're working working on that. Well, Logan's mentioned about the uh, the signage for those parks mm -hmm. is kind of not there. It's hard to see. It's hard to you know figure out well, which, can, what park is what park in a lot of I will a lot have, of cases. I, well, we were supposed to, as I recall. We were going to have kind of a, a a sign for each park that was adopted. Yes. But that that hasn't happened yet. I think it'd be a good idea. I'm going to have the sign at, at Kevin Barkley Park replaced. Okay. We're 
you're making fresh on there. Good. And then I'll see what's going on at Cocoa Isles. As far as I know, there are signs, but I'll, I'll double check. I'm pretty sure there are signs at all the yeah. parks. They're just but not, I'll double check them to make sure. Though. They're just not obvious. A lot yeah, of them are just worn down. Well, I'll check it out. All right, thank you. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Um, you know, I don't have much to say. I haven't, I haven't played much golf lately. Me neither. Um, I do know the course is very dry. I've, I've seen that, and um, uh, hopefully we get some rain soon. I know it's not going to be this week, and it's going to be hot the yes. rest of the week as well. So, um, not not good for for uh, the golf course and, and whatnot. Um, we've got a bicentennial park update. Is that from uh, Wayne? Yes. From Wayne. Okay. Good evening, I guess, everyone. My name is Wayne Caragino. I work for the city. I'm the assistant to the city manager and uh, the project manager on this Bicentennial Park project. Um, let me give you a little background. And um, I'll be referring, initially, I gave everybody two, two documents there. Uh, the first one is the one dated February 22nd. Um, so what this is, it's an agreement with uh, Mead and Hunt to begin the design and bidding process of the, uh, of the park itself. This park's been talked about for a long time. It's an eyesore as you come into the city. It floods. That's one of the big problems with the park. Um, there's also problems with the ramp. There's problems with parking in general for boats with, or for uh, vehicles with boats. Um, so it was long overdue for, for a facelift and, a, and a, actually a total overhaul. Uh, so this second page of this agreement is, um, is the result of a committee that was formed which went at le in length um, and a lot of community input into these bullet points which were incorporated into this document and you know became part of the basis for the uh, the project itself. The project is in well, it's on Route 520, right across from the hospital. In case anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, it, it's um it's actually it's a gateway park into the city, but it's on F dot right away, so it's not city property. And uh, what we had to do was get a a, a use improvement agreement with them, um, where We'll maintain the park and we'll do whatever improvements that we want as long as they agree with them and as long as we pay for them. Uh, so that's what the agreement uh, essentially is. Um, so with that being said, everything that we do there has to go to them for final approval. Um, the things like the elevation, um, Distances from their right of way, that not from the right of way, from their road, um, things like that. But, um, so anyway, this uh, this agreement was for two hundred and eight thousand um, dollars, and what I did was I went to Florida Inland Navigation District, and um, they're a granting agency that does um, work on. Actually, their core mission is dredging and spoil sites, but they've expanded out into other areas. And um, so they gave us 250, well, they didn't, the, the grant I went for was for $250,000. What they'll do is give you half of that. So I got a grant for $125,000, the extra amount in excess of this 208, just to get into some of the money here real quick, um, is for things that were excluded in this, like surveys, bathymetric surveys. Um, there's a wetland study that gets incorporated into the survey. Things like that. So um, when you do these, you always have to kind of anticipate some things that uh, might not be covered and, and get money for it. Um, so with that being said, maybe we'll get into a little bit of what's actually going on right now. That would be the second sheet. Um, they've gotten a survey, a preliminary survey, which would be uh, under number two, progress. Allen Engineering is doing the survey. Um, I have actually seen that, and what's going on with that, 
they did a bathymetric survey, which is an underwater survey, which is important for the ramp. Um, so that's been done, and that will be incorporated into the actual survey. Also, just today I was talking to them, and the, um, the biological evaluation is underway. The biological evaluation will also have to be incorporated into Allen's survey. So there's a little coordination there that was um, not understood, actually, at the beginning. Um, and then another thing that's going on, which uh, we're reaching out and uh, trying to coordinate with the project downtown is the uh, entrance sign. So entrance to Cocoa Beach, there's three prominent entrance to Cocoa Beach signs. One's here and one's at the north and south of uh, A1A. Uh, now they kind of look the same, but um, we're going to, I'm not really sure what we're, what we're going to do with that, but um, it, it hopefully will be coordinated with maybe the City Hall cultural green space area. And the thing with this sign is it has to be seen at like 55 miles an hour. So I've got some things from artists, local art artists, um, but that's, in, that's in, in process too. That's something that will help them with out, um, Mead and Hunt, which, which we said we would, and you know, it's, it's our sign, so, so that's going on too. Uh, one of the other major things here I should be getting a first draft of the conceptual design. There was a conceptual design that was put out for the grant application, and it, it was it was good, it was decent, but they've tweaked that, and hopefully, if you guys have me back, I can have that in hand and you know share that with everybody. Um, also, one of the major things on here, and, it, and it's number three, and it's um, our first meeting with FDOT. So we'll have to see how receptive they are because FDOT's stance on this, quite frankly, is we build roads, we don't build parks. You know, we're building a park in their domain. Um, so we'll see. You know, it, it, we're doing a good thing here and, and we want to make it safe. One of the major things with this park renovation is going to be the, is the, uh, the flooding issue. And it's been pretty much determined that the only way to correct that is to elevate the whole park. Um, so we have to deal with the issue of the wetlands on the south side. I mean, not the wetlands, the, um, yeah, the wetlands, I'm sorry. On the south side, there's some mangroves in there. Um, we want to avoid all that. And then we have to marry into their road as far as elevations go so we don't flood onto their road. It's all engineering stuff and, um, you know, we'll figure it out, but um, I'm saying I'm a lot here and my wife's going to kill me when I get out of here, <laughs> but one of the, one, of the one, tonight? one, one thing I want to get out here is money, okay? That's like, <laughs> that's what it's all about. But well, let me ask right. you this. We're going through uh, FDOT to get the permission to improve the park at our expense, right? Yes. We will never own that land, is that correct? That's right. So we're developing a park out of right away that the city of Cocoa Beach only will maintain, but it cannot be called a city park. Is that about it? Mm hmm Okay. That's the way it goes, yep. Well, I think it's it's something that we need to do. I mean it's a it's an interest. We've been doing it's the interest of Cocoa Beach. I'm, we're, I mean, we're not making that decision. We're kinda kinda giving suggestions to the city to do. That's not our our position right, here to right. make this decision. That's the commission's job to to determine whether you're going to go forward with it. Um, I, I believe they will. Um, but um, yeah, it's the, one thing I want to ask you, you know, I see a lot of, I've been involved in this, these different processes for a long time. And I know putting riprap on the shoreline is not, is that, is it even legal to do? Yeah. Bust it up kind, is it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're doing it. I know they are. That's my, my concern is why they're, they're putting riprap there and, you know, instead of building a seawall on that causeway. And, you know, they, I don't know if that's a... Well, that's going to be one of the things that we're going to have to discuss right away. Yeah. What are your future plans for the causeway itself? Right. You know, and we have, to, raise we have to conform to their long-term plan for the causeway. 
and that's sea level rise and all, you know, you're getting into that world. So, yeah. Um, well, they kind of backed out of that plan to raise that. I mean, wasn't that was on their radar for for the next like uh, ten years, five years, five I think years. it was, and then all yeah. of a sudden it's yeah. There's you know it went from filling the causeway to raise it to having like a relief bridge that's raised the whole length. Um, I think what's driving it all is money, and yeah. it's extremely expensive. Yeah. And other ones might take a priority over the 520 causeway, i.e. the 528 causeways in certain areas. Yeah. So that's that's in their master okay. plan, not not ours. But but um, unfortunately, we have you know it's it's the deck we've been dealt, so we have to deal with it. Um, but as far as the money goes, and um, to your reference, you know, it, it, it kind of seems like we're taking it on the chin with this one. Yeah, but so bit. the first part, this is phase one. This is the way it works with that first that grant that I got for the engineering, the permitting, and engineering. Yeah. Is fine. We'll give you half. So um, the other half is being paid through ARPA funds, um, which is federal money coming in. So the first phase is completely paid for with other people's money. Um, but the way the fine grant works is you're not eligible for reimbursement of any of that $125,000 until you sign a contract with a contractor hmm. to do the park. So that's down the road. Now, the park part of it, the, the construction part of it, what we've done is it was right I guess it was President's Day. It was right before the the, the, the state session began. Um, our new city manager, um, very proactive. She hired, um, well, the commission hired a, um, a lobbying company, Ray Robinson. Um, we went up, we have, we identified three projects that we wanted to concentrate on. One was the city hall project. One was um, a sanitary sewer project. And the other one was this project. So we filled out all of the, the, the appropriations um, paperwork and submitted them to the legislature. And um, we went up there and we actually met with um, Senator Mayfield, various House members, House committee members. Um, and the result of that is, and we just found out today that the Bicentennial Park project is um, Senate Bill 1705A, so it's in the budget. No. Now that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get the money, and the, the City Hall project is also in it too, which is one point, so this one has been put in the budget for $1.25 million. Okay, so that, that will be substantial in this project. It, it has to survive the governor review. The governor has line item veto power, but I mean, it's really good that we were, you know, we got it in. Yeah. So the rest of the project, because we're up to like $3.2 million on this project, on the construction side of it. So I can definitely um, apply to St. John's River Water Management District because a big part of this project is stormwater management. We have direct, direct discharge of floods. You know, you, you got cars parking there, you get oil in that water. You know, we can treat the water before it discharges into the river now. So that's what St. John's is all about. They'll fund it up to a million dollars, and I've gotten million dollar grants for dredging from from them. So that's the max with them. Um, and then the remainder, once we get somebody on board, is I can go for a phase two for um, find to get the remainder. So we can con conceivably have this whole project funded and paid for without the city kicking in everything but my time. Which will exceed a million bucks. <laughs> yeah. so we call it uh, Wayne Carey's Good luck. Park. I think. Good luck for that going forward. <laughs> um, no, but all kidding aside, I mean that's yeah. you know that's what you want to do with these projects. So uh, that's the plan, and um, it, it's moving along. You know, it's it's a little slower than I want, and I tried to push Mead Hunt a little bit further, a little bit harder. Um, so hopefully I, I can come back and have more to report. I can have the initial concept, conceptual plan. Yep. Um, I know Orson, I don't want to call you out, but Orson was concerned about um, commercial activities there. The commercial activities uh, will be regulated.
by the city, but the, but find wants and encourages commercial activity, but it's commercial activities related to to fishing and commercial fishing. So we're talking about crabbers and activities like that on the river. You know, there used to be shrimp guy, but all that kind of stuff. Um, we can't uh, we can't uh, stop that from happening, or we won't get the money. We won't get the grant. So. Um, that's it. And you, got, you guys have any questions? So, you know, I know that the main thing is we got money and we got the project going. So we're not talking about it anymore. We're doing it. So when we would actually break ground there, I mean, there's a lot of other permitting that has to be done too, which is, you know, that started too. We have to get an uh, Army Corps. We'll get a joint permit. Um, it'll be Army Corps and DEP. It's, it's a one application combined permit. Um, we've got to look at the ramp and make sure the elevations work out and the slope and, you know, things like that. So, um, there's a bunch of engineering in it, but it's an it's a exciting engineering project. So. so this is probably two to three years out. Um, I'd say all this permitting stuff and the design and whatnot, probably, yeah, a year mm -hmm. and then maybe two, two and a half years, which, you know, it is what, that's what projects yeah, take, so. Our city hall is gonna be the same thing, you know? yeah. If you, um, I know you said you're putting a lot of emphasis on FDOT's approval or not to their own property there. If uh, that is not, if, if you just stop right there, because FDOT says no way, uh, can your grant be reallocated towards I'll use the word beautification of that area, you know, the new welcome sign uh, uh, or whatever, or is that, is your grant then null and void because there will not be any more engineering? Yeah, no, you, you the grant was specific. Yep, right, right. Yeah, yep. yeah so um, I don't think that's, we'll say I, I doubt it, you know. I mean, they, they knew what we were kind of up to when, when we signed the agreement with them, the maintenance and improvement agreement. Yeah, I think yeah. I mean, we been, had been maintaining that park, yeah, forever, and and with no agreement. Yeah, I mean, and FDOT's just, FDOT's aware of what's going on, and we've been communicating with them. So, you know, it's yeah. it's not going to be a surprise. I there's not a. There, there's no I don't see a surprise. I don't see a surprise yeah. coming from either direction, really. Right. It, it's so, it's to their advantage yeah. to to let it to do what we're doing. You know, they recognize that with their hardening. That's the riprap is hardening, you know, that, that one section there, it, I forget which flood it was, which um, storm it was, but it was, li it literally washed right across the oh, causeway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, they, they recognized the issue um, and we'll work it out. They're, they're not the big bad boogeyman, you know, they, it, it's to their advantage. So, okay. um, you're just dealing with a bigger bureaucracy. Yeah. I, I worked for 25 years for New Jersey DOT and other people that I know that were sitting in the oh. work for 25 <laughs> years for the DOT too. So we know it with yeah. a large scale. You can have a footnote on everything, Wayne. It's signage says it owned by the state, operated and taken care of by the city. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's in there right away. They own the road, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing we run into on A1A. You know, they're putting these crosswalks, they're doing all this stuff that, you know, the comeback to that is they listen to us, but when it comes down to it, it's their road. Yeah. You know, the last go round we had with those is we got the plans at 100%. Right. That's pretty much telling you that, hey, this is what we're doing, you know, yeah. so. Um, but they're not, you know, they're, they're reasonable. You know. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Wayne. And All right. Yeah, and I, you know, you guys want me to come back? Just give me a holler, and I'll keep you posted on what's going on, and we'll keep pushing. Anyone out there want to have any questions or public comment? Okay. Okay. Right. Thanks, Wayne. Right. 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 Talk. You need to come. You to come up there. Come, come on up, please. Come on down. Oh, yeah. It's rough. I'm just adding. 
Orson Tarver on 718 Drive. Because adding what, what he was talking about is that there was a time where a general enterprising gentleman started oper operating pontoon boat rentals out of Bicentennial Park. So he had his employees there, he had his boats tied up to the docks. Uh, and then of course he had all the customers, you know, and it was a big problem. I'm, I don't know if the city flushed flushed him out or, or what, he's no longer there now, but that's one of the things is, you know, if we fix up the park, we probably just need to just make sure the commercial activity is, you know, thought through, right. you know, so that doesn't, situations like that don't happen again. Yeah, right. thank you. But it's gonna be really nice, I was on the, actually women. <laughs> I was actually on the committee that we talked about the improvements and everything that on these bullet points is like basically everything that was discussed amongst Right. The kite boarders and the and the boaters and trailer boaters. Actually, one of them <clears throat> is now a city commissioner. He was on that committee with me as well, uh, and so it's pretty cool to see that it's all coming together. So thanks, Wayne. Thanks, city. Awesome. All right. Oh, uh, what's next on our agenda? I think uh, skate park. Mike. 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 Bye, Mike. Sorry, wake up. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Mike Rogers from the Grind for Life in the Kiwanis Club. Uh, the, the improvements out there fixing the cracks were good by the city, so it kept it from spreading more and more and, and all that. And I heard that uh, it's going out to bid to fix the skate park, one hundred twenty-five thousand they have to do the do the fixing. Actually, we have two hundred in the budget. How many? Wow. Uh, that is not just. That is also for possibly BMX, a ramp, a high half. Pike? Pike. I'm not a skateboarder. The mini ramp? <laughs> yeah, mini ramp, ramp yes. Mini ramp. That's included in it too. I don't yes. see any BMXers in here. So we can cut it out? I don't see any BMXers in here advocating for their we can get extension. Rid of it. We can get rid of it. I've then. been coming to this meeting for seven years since they've been doing yeah. leisure yeah. service meetings. I've been coming every, I, mean, I might have missed one or, one or two, but um, yes. we have 200,000 to do the skate park. Yes. We could do this. And this is all we need, and the park would be packed. The pavilion yeah, you is need where pavilion. everybody can sit and yeah. watch their kids. And then you have more parent involvement there, and you don't have so much nonsense with this being there. And this right here would be from time school got out, so the park closed, would be ridden. And then. We would have got this project done back four years ago when I started. Materials were six thousand fifty-one dollars. <laughs> but anyway, that's where we're at. We got a budget now to do this. Let me get this straight. It's in the budget, but has passed commission first. I understand. <laughs> that's not. That's not jump to but conclusions. I, yes. But I have some it. insight it's in that it's, um, it's one of the it. main things that's going to be approved to. Fix the skate park hasn't been worked on in Not 20 finished. years, so now improvements would be so appreciated and would go so much to help the kids. And we could do cool events here with the drip towels and all kinds of cool stuff. So yeah, I think Mike, the the thing with the BMX, and, and it wasn't I didn't wasn't mentioning it for the budget reason or whatever. I, I don't know if that could be reached out to their community, um, but it was tried to solve the BMX. Problems. Well, the thing with the BMX this, is they've never been here. We've been doing yeah. park planning meetings. I've been, yeah. So even this, before I moved here to Cocoa Beach, I was a skate park director for a YMCA, ran a skate park for seven years for a YMCA, and wrote letters up here for the, for the Taylors. Toby Taylor had three of the best skateboarders from Cocoa Beach that were world class athletes from here. And, uh, we never had any BMX involvement with none of the planning meetings, all that stuff. So, so they just come so in they, and they, just... the parks built. They were never an advocate to get a night. Like we do leader shares and we could do a night for them out there, but there's nobody here to advocate for the BMX. Yeah. So, well, um, does it that skateboarders? We've been here from the get go planning it and advocating for it and all that stuff for for 20 years now for so. sure um but this is the, <laughs> the bike so like for me to spend all my time and then i do the community night out there twice a month and that's like giving the city two thousand dollars each time each one of those to do those is like a thousand dollars to do a community night 
each time with time, prizes, sure. all that, you know, like the donations from all the industry. So that's like, yeah, what, $24,000 that Run for Life does in giving back to the community out there at the skate park, doing events, programs, just giving back to the community, making sure we have good programs for the skate park. Because if there's nothing going on out there, there's just nonsense going on. So okay. that's the model for the whole country. It ain't just Cocoa Beach. I was over at Zephyr Hills. We did a Run for Life on there Saturday. I was there Friday. There's kids just hanging out, hitting vape pins, but not even skating the skate park because there's no activity there. And there's nobody there to watch them. Mm -hmm. So you don't have any there, everybody watching or rope programs. People end up going to the wrong, doing bad, stupid stuff, you know? So that's the importance of doing a community night out there twice a, a month. That's the importance of coming to these leisure service meetings and letting everybody know what we're doing with the organization, helping people get to the right cancer treatment by doing skateboard events, doing the positive work, you know? So the person that puts in the work should get the, the grease to get the mini ramp in the pavilion. Well, that's, so, that's, on, so that, that's, that's what high we're up. saying. That's high up. That's what we're saying. That's high up. <laughs> yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for the good work. Yeah. We got the budget. Yeah, yeah Laird. Thanks, Mike. 20 years. All right, Mike. <laughs> it, it took a while. Uh, or it's, well, it's not there quite there yet, but I, yes. I have a feeling the commission is uh, um, going to view it positively. Have you ever done one of a PR program to, to the commissioners and to anybody else? A skate park is not high on a lot of people's uh, mm -hmm. list. They don't even know where it is, number one. Yeah. <clears throat> Take the, maybe get them to take a little tour or have good pictures in the slideshow for them. But how many kids choose it in a year? I know I do um, skate camp, I do over um, 300 lessons in 34 days. And yeah, this, this park is well known. Yeah. This well, park is, is well known. It's very popular. Yes. One. It's well known. It's a, it's a different the park. Skate park's full yes. It's in yes. pro skaters, skateboard park. Yes. We got Clyde Dixon. To yes. King of the Road champion. He's the Kelly Slater street board, street skating in Cocoa Beach. Five days. Yeah, it's an unusual it's park. So people like to, they like, like to come here. Yeah. Harlow came to the last meeting and she was about to go to Dubai to yes. yeah. 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 get yep. an Olympic qualifier out of 160 girl skaters from all around the world. She so got 25th. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Mike, for everything you, you've yeah, done for the yeah, skate park and, and for Cocoa here. Beach. So we're, we want to move on to uh, uh, public comment. Does anyone else out there like to nope. like to speak? Come up and say something on any subject you want to talk about. Yes, well, I'm, I know you've got something to talk about. <laughs> What's that? Good. <laughs> I mean, actually, I'm out here. You asked me to come, so you know, you wanted me to come to this meeting to speak. I, well, I wanted you to come to the meeting and, and see the meeting. We we need. Oh. This is the most people we've ever had at this meeting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, this is it. I, mean, <laughs> man, I think we maybe we've had an it's you know something where we've had maybe yes. ten or fifteen people, yeah. but crowded. Like, this is huge. We're crowded today. Yeah, we got yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm here for you, Tim. Actually, well, I'm here well, for you, Matt. After we uh, yeah, talked at. Um, <laughs> right. So we yeah we talked about uh, the pricing of you know the different the uh, the way they changed the pricing here, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah you and I both agreed that it might have yeah. could have been done maybe a little bit different, but that's that's not our job. Can I, I mean, say something? We're we're not we're not in charge okay. of, of that right, piece yeah. of it. Can I say something first? Sure. Just oh you want to go ahead? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's okay. But I know okay. What I know what I know what you were asking at the meeting. And I am actually, I spoke with um, the lady who actually did the survey for us, and we're actually working on a price to show the difference with the increase and what previous. Re revenue. So we're actually, gonna, we're actually putting oh. that together right now. So oh, that's cool. something that you'll see well, it's coming up soon. Good. Yes. That's good. Yeah, because um, actually, you know, it's pretty interesting after that, so the city council meeting that we were both there, um, actually Jeremy Hutchison, actually, I had talked to him actually quite a bit, and he actually put together a little analysis that he said I should share with you guys mm -hmm. uh, regarding the fees. Um, I guess it's passed. I'll just hand it. I don't have, sorry, I only brought one copy, so I'm just going to hand it around. But, you know, um, 
And by no means speaking on, on his behalf, I'm speaking on my behalf, but we both kind of shared the same sentiments that, you know, this fee structure went, came to the city council, this new fee structure for golf. I mean, we know that over the past two years, there's been tremendous uh, inflationary pressures on everything. Costs are going up. Um, you know, and I had met with the, on an unrelated matter, with the mayor many months ago, and I asked, how's the golf course going? He gave me, the city manager gave him a printout that it was losing 100000 a year. I don't know, that was only one year. I, don't, I didn't ask, like, for the past 10 years. I, maybe it's been making buckets of money, and it just had one bad year. I'm not going to say it didn't, it wasn't doing better, but, you know, so I came to speak because I saw that there was this whole analysis done and this, um, you know, very nice, um, I mean, I've seen it's a good quality survey, but there was then you know the, the fee rate that was proposed. Uh, there was no actual like financial analysis. Like you know, if, if the course is losing a hundred thousand a year and there's capital needs, actually, I was just looking at the capital budget. There's like three and a half million dollars needed just in repairs to the sprinkler system. I think um, you know just really prompted me to speak to the commission, saying like, guys, you know, you know this course needs to be sustainable. This needs to be something. It doesn't need to make money. It doesn't need like a, a profit center and churn out you know lots of money to hand out to the rest of the city budget. But I mean, gosh, you gotta at least try to get the expenses to where it's kind of covering it at least close or be nice if we could put a little bit of money aside for capital improvements. But when you're losing 100,000 a year, you need three and a half million dollars of improvements. The fee schedule, as you see, Jeremy did a little analysis. I mean, it's kind of odd that, I, I agree. I mean, I'm not speaking on his behalf, being clear. But I, I agree when I looked at that with him, I said, man, it's like, wouldn't you want the non-residents or the, or the non, city residents and non-state folks like coughing up some cash to play here, extra cash. When you look at the analysis, it looks like only the, the actual Cocoa Beach residents are actually paying anymore to play with this new structure. So, I mean, I think kind of think makes sense. Like, you know, hey, folks don't live here and don't, you know, I pay taxes here. I, I, I understand and, and other CB residents pay taxes. You know, you should get, you should pay less than other folks. But these out-of-towners, man, make them pay, you know, get some revenue out of these guys. Um, I mean, and you know, maybe residents do need to pay a little more. I'm not saying they shouldn't, but at the end of the day, I just think, um, you know, in talking, I talked to actually another commissioner as well, who, who's kind of concerned and it's like, Hey, you know, like maybe we really got to take a look at the finances here and really make sure we understand like what this fee schedule will do to help reduce the loss. And if we're not at least erasing the loss, I mean, are we narrowing the gap? And another thing is there was a study done in 2015. Tim, I think you were on the commission, right? Yep. Um, it pointed out that there's actually some, this is 2015, maybe these things have been addressed by now. I can't say if they have or not, but it really addressed some very structural problems with the golf course. Labor costs were much higher than other courses. Uh, they pointed specifically to the 19th hole as being probably a bit of a drag maybe financially and, and kind of driving some of these things. And I was actually looking, I just got something on Facebook. I mean, good Lord, it's, I think actually, honestly, it's more expensive for me to go to Publix and buy food than if I just dined seven days a week at this golf course down here. And I mean, heck, even the beer's cheap too. I, I could have a couple of beers too and still make out like a bandit. I mean, you know, it's, 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 should it be that cheap? I don't know. Maybe that's something else to look into. Like, are the prices of the 19th hole appropriately covering expenses? I mean, you got city employees running it. I mean, your labor is much higher than the they, places. They've changed the prices there as well. I mean, I literally just got the Facebook ad and it looked like it was the same. I don't know. Maybe, maybe change it. Sorry. Just an observation. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, I just was thinking and, you know, I talked to me and Tim, spent, you know, good 10, 15 minutes talking at Friday Fest. Um, and it would be nice to really, if you guys can kind of get together and all, I know you guys are not a, you don't vote on anything or anything, but if you can just like be like, hey, you know, if we're going to be doing this new fee structure, let's really dig into this expenses and really make sure we understand what's going on here. And try to set up some type of goal of where we want the course to get to because I mean if you're just barely I mean the money three and a half billion bucks to fix a sprinkler system you're not changing this course anyway to become more you know for more folks to come and I understand there's some ideas of what could be done I don't know how much it's going to cost I heard that that was another separate conversation but either way maybe it's time to really kind of look at this whole situation so that's really that's really my comment on the whole thing so thanks for your time yeah, thank, thank you Orson mm -hmm. right, okay. yeah almost. anyone else Come on up. Just state your name and so we can write it in the minutes. Uh, Jesse Hunter, I'm also representing with Drift House. Uh, I've been talking to Mike periodically over the last couple of years just about the skate park, and this is my first time coming to the meeting. 
so I just want, I heard about the 200, possible $200,000 grant. Uh, you know, Mike's shown kind of the plans that he has in regards to the, the ramp and everything like that. But what is actually going on with like the skate park? Just so like I'm a little bit more in the know. And then what's the parameters for the possible request of an expansion for a BMX expansion or is it possible to just expand on the skate park and make it larger because it is very small compared to a lot of the other Brevard skate parks uh, around so I just kind of wanted to see kind of like what's really kind of going on with that I probably shouldn't have thrown the BMX thing out there it was just like an idea that was, you know basically Mike said it was a problem at the skate park right because it damages it right well, sometimes the with their pegs skateboarding no it was never engineered to have the BMX the scooters the, the um, non-skateboard like nowadays all the parts you know we're our oldies goldies it was um, bought for 10 years by the skateboarders and then the city made some earth for 3 years and it was a labor of love but nowadays there's budgets for big skate parks and all wheels like West Melbourne yeah. so that's like like we're a holy goalie, we're a little small time each skate park. It was made by the labor of love by the city. So now like action sports is broke and the X Games and all these. So you have the BMXers and the scooter riders and the quad riders and we only have an eight thousand square foot skate park. So right. So Larry, do you have sorry, park. sorry Mike, do you do you have any answer to that? I know the B this is the first I've heard about the BMX being an I mean, issue it's, there. It's just and, something we're looking into. It's nothing definite, right? Now the biggest thing we're doing right now is repairs of the skate park itself. Yeah. That is the main thing of the right now. We want to repair what we have right now. So it is usable and safe. Right. Anything else after that will come after that. The, as far as BMX, we're just talking. Just talking right now. We've we've spoken with the school board. We don't even know if we're getting land to even expand mm -hmm. for that. So right now, the number one thing is to repair the skate park that we have right now, and to add on possibly a ramp. That's um, it. That's all for now. Yes. In regards to the repair, like uh, I've seen some of the repair that's happened, like with the coping. No, and this stuff. this is this is a total revamp. This okay. is not a patch so it's not job. A patch job. Not a patch job. No, we're talking about cutting out concrete and repairing the gotcha. way it's supposed to be. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, that kind of answers most of the questions yeah. I have. It's, I it's not a patch out. job, no. And then if there's anything that we can do like to help, I know that you guys mentioned like some PR stuff and things around like the skate park, we'd be happy to help for sure. That'd be Thank awesome. You. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Excellent. Is that a question? <laughs> I'll say yes to the answer. I'm yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Sarah Inman, um, 205 North 2nd Street. So with the golf course, um, specifically like with the pro shop and like the other, not necessarily specifically the course itself, it's also like, I want you had a good point because it is referred to as a country club and it's not priced country club. Um, but with the pro shop, is that also employed by? Yes. By, by city employees? Has it ever been considered about maybe putting that out for like a bid for some for another company to come in and own that shop and run that and operate it that way? I don't believe the pro shop has, uh, but the but the nineteenth hole definitely was about uh, twenty years ago. Yeah, Rusty, about that, yeah. it would be a great time to probably revisit both of those. Well, that they they discussed that. There's a there is a um, an issue that uh, for my. Uh, for me, I, it needs to be resolved. I, I know that we have a, a lease with the state. So this entire property here, the golf course um, from Tom Warner West around here, the tennis courts, the pool, and the entire golf course is leased from the state. Um, I'm not sure of the exact terms, but it's something like $100 for 50 years. And um, I don't know when that comes due, uh, but during in, also in that lease, can only be used for recreation. There was a statement made at the last commission meeting that we weren't, um, that the city, or the city attorney said that we couldn't lease out. A third party thing. A third party. 
a third, which seemed kind of odd to me, and I need to get some clarification on that. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I think that's referring to the golf itself, not necessarily. I it's think that's referring to golf course. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Like we couldn't turn this over to some. We turned. We couldn't turn the golf course over to a third party. Right. It has to be run by the city. Yeah. So I could but see that. Yeah. Um, I know that yeah. we've I had. I, I don't, I see, there's I been like know. vendor it's, situations it's, it's, with yeah. some of the beaches. I know where there's been we owned part of it, the city owned part of it, and some, the county owned part of it. So I'm sure there's like workarounds on that. But I just know, I know that there are businesses in this community that are chomping at the bits to get their hands on either of those and would would make them a nice destination for people and they would be willing to work with the city on that. So I just think it's something to open up the conversation. I know there's like so much in the background that has to be worked yeah. out and finagled around. But I think if we're looking at $100,000 in the hole every single year and $3 millions in costs, we need to start reaching out to business minds to figure out how to get that sorted out and less of the golf people. I, I'm with you. I, I think that certainly needs to be looked into. That's um, it. Thank you. Something I, I, there was one other thing I mentioned at that uh, particular, at the last commission meeting, and it was about the golf course. If it's, you know, it, this is an amenity. Now, don't get me wrong, yeah, it'd be, we need to do the best we can to make money, um, and it should be profitable. I mean, it's a, it's a diamond in the rough out here that just, it just should be blowing up. Um, that being said, and I, and I definitely want to go forward in that direction, but what a lot of people don't realize, like right now, is that this amenity and what this amenity actually does for the entire city, not just playing golf, not just, hey, somewhere to go for a restaurant or pick up, get some golf outfits and whatnot or to swim at the pool and this and that, but it has to do with the property values of the entire city, but mostly out here on the, in the Country Club, Fairway, down Minutemen, all the uh, uh, canal roads and, and all the housing there. How much more valuable is that property because we have a golf course and an Olympic pool and 10 tennis courts run by USTA right here, you know, within walking distance for a lot of people. And, you know, what, what is that? So you have a, a, a half million dollar home, a $500,000 home. How much of that is value is based on this golf course? Oh, it's a, it's a three bedroom, two bath, 2,000, 2,100 square foot home, uh, right on the golf course. So instead of it being 400,000, maybe it's now 500,000, maybe it's 100, maybe it's, I don't know if it's 10%, 20%, I don't know what that value is, that, that this golf course and these amenities actually raise the value of these properties. Now, you think, oh, well, what value of the property? Well, that's ad valorem tax. That ad valorem tax is what the city gets a, a lot of revenue from, and so what, what percentage is that? Is it more than, you know, what, what dollar amount is that at the end of the day? Every year after year after year, is it is it a hundred thousand dollars? Is it two hundred thousand? Is it a million dollars? I don't know, but that needs to be. I'm not a realtor and or a, you know, so I don't I don't know those those numbers. But I'd like to find out and and see where we are. So that kind of goes along with that. Not that we need to. Oh well, it's it makes the city a million dollars, so we should be able to lose a million dollars. Be okay. And that's not what I'm saying whatsoever. I'm just saying trying to get a a perspective of where we are and uh, what the value of this, this amenity really is to the city. Looking at that one. How do we handle the situation with the tennis courts? Uh, those leased to the, to the company that's running? The private operation? contract. Private contract. Private contract. Yeah. Okay. So what rights do they have? Can they make decisions about changing anything? That city has to, has to make. Has to, yeah, city, has to, city has to agree to that, yes. Okay. They can't do anything unless the city agrees to it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, staff reports? Yeah. Um, Easter egg hunt, April 8th, 9 a.m. at the ball fields, 9 a.m. sharp. All right. There is also the, um, we have any, no, no, no basket, no Easter eggs, no contest, just a regular Easter egg hunt. Prize eggs. What's that? 12 prize eggs. 12 prize eggs on the field. Great prizes, 9 o'clock sharp on the 8th. Swim lessons. Uh, summer camp registration is online as of now, and people have already started registering. 
So yeah, look out for that. Check the city, the uh, our Facebook. It's on Facebook. It's on uh, what's the name of that? Rec Dex. Rec Dex. Yes. So registration has started, and people are already registering. Summer camp is our big thing. I mean, really big. So yeah, it's it's online, ready to go. Okay, that's all I have. Anything else? Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the meeting we had with the individual who did all of the gathering the information for uh, the golf course. Oh, yeah. The professor from UCF. Yeah. We've done that now. We've got the, the I guess what we'd say, we've kind of figured out some of the hot points or hot spots. Are we, what are we doing now? Yes, we are implementing. We're implementing it? Yes. Yes, we are. Okay, can you yes. give me an example of what we're implementing? Um, well, one was the fees. Okay. The other thing is the, um, the facelift. This whole complex is going to the commission on the 16th for face, total facelift, it's whole inside. Mm. No, everything inside. That's going to this commission on the 16th. The golf course, we have some plans out there too that is going to be implemented also. Yep, it's, uh, everything's in the works. So we, so we got bu budgeting considerations yep. for this yep. year to make yep. these improvements? Yep. It's good to hear, Bert. Yep. Larry. Yep. Things are happening. A little tough the last couple we're not, of years. We're not sleeping. Things are happening. <laughs> good. Yes. Thank you. Good. Glad to hear that. Yes. Anything so, else? 